Hello again to all of you. Have another little story for you today. Earlier this year, a couple doing some traveling came through Florida and asked if we could meet for a little while, which we did. And as we became acquainted, the man in this couple indicated that he was a retired accountant, but not your ordinary accountant. He was a retired Pentagon accountant. Of course, I had never heard of such a thing. And he indicated that to be an auditor of the Department of Defense, i.e. the Pentagon, you had to have special certification, special training. And after he continued to describe it, I could see why, which is because there's no hope that the budget will ever balance, that the books will ever balance. He said every single other department of the federal government has annual audits and all of their books balance, but not the Pentagon's. And he said the reason for that is there are so many departments and so many projects and so many subsets of things going on, and they all have their own systems. And I can imagine all of these departments with their own computer systems, their own way of programming, and so on and so forth, and none of them interface with each other, which makes trying to get accurate, comprehensive overall information a complete impossibility. He said it's simply impossible to balance the budget. So it seems more or less just like us, like we turn into little departments of defense not interfacing because the ego mind abhors connection. It wants to use and it wants to manipulate and control, but it doesn't actually want to relate. And the reason why it promotes all of this separation and differences rather than joining and commonalities is because for this picture of ourselves, the ego mind, all of that programming, the image of ourselves, to survive, it's got to have all this conflict. We've talked about that before. We'll probably talk about it often because we need to have it sink in. So all of this defending may be food for the ego mind, but it's heartbreaking to the loving presence that we actually are. So how in the world did we fall into this trap in the first place? Well, as we know, all of that programming of our defensiveness starts very early on. It's instinctive in all young animals to try to move away from pain and toward something that feels better. And the problem is we keep presuming that there's something or someone out here in the world that's causing the pain. So it certainly seems logical based on that false premise that defenses are needed. And we never really inquire about the validity of our hypothesis, but we just keep forging ahead on the assumption that it's true. What we fail to understand is that if I defend against something or someone, that's a declaration in my own mind that they are the guilty, offensive parties, and we, of course, therefore, are the innocent victims. And as we've discussed before, this always backfires. So how does this backfire? Because if you know that, it's easier to begin to move in another direction. All of these thoughts of guilt are in our minds. Notice, if I'm thinking about this, it's in my mind, where it's incorporated into our neural networking. So we're paying attention to guilt, and the mind doesn't know if the guilt is about something about me, something about somewhere else. All it knows is, is the notion of guilt is being activated. And so in a sense, we're trying to give this guilt and pain away in order to get rid of it. But this never, ever works. Because of the fact that what I'm paying attention to increases within myself. Statements like everything you give, you give to yourself are absolutely true. And that's because all this guilt and pain that you're trying to give away is experienced by you. So the more we defend, the worse things get. And we have not obviously been able to see that cause and effect relationship, or we wouldn't continue down the path we continue down. So I need to think about 
what I want to receive and give it, knowing that what I give, I'm always going to get. If it's in my mind, and it must be in my mind if I'm thinking about it enough to give it, it's going to increase in me. So, unless we are just totally insane, it should be self-evident that it's to my advantage to offer to everyone, despite what's going on, love and peace and compassion, and understanding, affection, support, because all parties, I and everyone else, are equal recipients of those gifts. So of all the many things to be thankful for this Thanksgiving season, a primary one is that I'm in charge of my mind. I'm in charge of what's in it, how it's going to get rewired, and mercifully for the understanding that I will always experience what I offer to others and to myself. And what I offer to myself and others is constantly my choice. If I don't like what I've given in the past based on what I've created for myself, not to worry. Every moment is a new moment. I get to start all over again. Mistakes I've made in the past aren't going to be a problem. I change my mind now. Rather than pretending like we're separate little departments of defense, always under attack, we pretend like, by something out there, we begin to experience that we are a singular consciousness. And what affects one affects all. So out of enlightened self-interest, choose the gifts wisely, since you'll be the very first recipient. And one last important thing, don't try to figure out how this works. Like, how in the world does it make any sense to be nice to those awful people? Because you can't do that. Try it and see what happens. And don't worry, if you don't like being happy and safe, which you will tend to be, you can always invite that <laughs> insane programming back in. You can unpack all those old, unworkable defenses and shrink back down to being a small, little, dismal person. If you want to do that, doesn't sound like a good choice, but you always can. So trying to figure out how this works is like trying to figure out the taste of olives before you've actually tasted one. That's impossible. Somebody can give you a description and they can say, well, they're round, sort of, oval shaped, and they taste kind of salty. That gives you no information at all about what an olive actually tastes like. You'll never know it until you taste it. Thanks for all of you for every attempt you make to change your mind, to love and support yourself, let past history go, and to recognize I'm not a victim of anything except the programming in my own mind, and I can change that. So, I'm not a victim of anything at all. I'm just temporarily uninformed about how life works, and we're getting that straightened out really fast. I hope you have a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving, and enjoy those olives. Bye.